This morning's headline in Politico is about a GOP report from another uh, entity detailing how the Republican Party is, quote, stuck in the past and that women are barely receptive to the party. Uh, the Republican Party is in worse shape with women now than it was in 2010. Why do you think that is? The problem you seem to have is when it comes to women voters, do the, do the arguments about contraception end up blind, basically putting, putting uh, the party on mute with those same women voters who may, want, may like your economic <clears throat> proposals but say, you know what, there's just too many crazy white guys who have crazy theories about my reproductive system. You know, that, that really makes me angry and sick, the new host of Meet the Press. Too many white guys. I love when they say white guys with such disdain. Granted, that was MSNBC, and granted, we're going to be talking uh, uh, mostly about Time and CNN. Nonetheless, we welcome in Jeffrey Lord, contributing editor at the American Spectator. You read him at newsbusters.org as well, also former aide to President Ronald Reagan. And Jeffrey, that's where I read the piece. As soon as I read it, um, the Ebola of journalism liberalism is killing time and cnn and uh, that's not like killing time like on your watch that's killing time magazine um and uh, I, I i immediately uh, emailed michael and rich and said i know we just had jeffrey but please see if he'll come back uh, again real soon because i, I want to talk about this piece it was a brilliant piece um and a, gr a great headline whoever wrote that that headline based on your first line call it the ebola of journalism and it's spreading to time and cnn you know, it is remarkable to me, I think that what we have here is liberalism has become a religion. And it doesn't matter what you do if you're a liberal. You could be a journalist, you could be a mainline Protestant preacher, you can be a teacher, you could be a lawyer. You're devoted to liberalism first and everything else second. And in the case of Time and CNN, Time once upon a time, Time invented the magazine business as we know it and was high and mighty. Its uh, co-founder there, Henry Luce, and, and Britton Haddon. Mr. Haddon died uh, six years after the magazine was founded in 1923, and Mr. Luce took it on and made it the magazine in America. And now they're moving out of the Time Life building. They're about to let hundreds of people go. Uh, CNN is now letting hundreds of people go, or uh, quite a number of people go, and their ratings are, are you know, in the basement. There's a reason for this, and it's because they are so uh, so wrapped up in American liberalism that they would rather do that than journalism, and so their uh, their audience flees. And you would think they would learn a lesson, but not so. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And MSNBC is is basically a, a lost cause when it comes to ratings, uh, and in this time of uh, breaking news and and uh, and, and troubled uh, troubled foreign policy, troubled domestic policy with Ferguson. Uh, it, still in all, MSNBC has seen their ratings just disappear. But, but you're right. I mean, you look, you know, it, it, there's uh, uh, pictures of the, the covers of Time. Uh, I see two, four, six, eight that have either Barack Obama. Uh, six of them have just Obama. One has Michelle Obama. The other one has the two Obamas on, on, on one of the, either one of his swearing-ins. I don't remember if it was the first or second. Uh, nonetheless, um, th this, and they're all, all the stories, of course, are praise That's uh, right. and, and praising Obama. There's never any criticism. And when you have a country where the president has a 38, 40 percent approval rating, 65 percent say the next president has to have new policies, 70, 80 percent say we're headed in the wrong direction, uh, th th these media outlets go along with, they, Jeffrey, they tell you that the sky is green, the grass is blue, and if you don't agree with that, there's something wrong with you. And then sooner or later, people get disgusted and say, I can't take this anymore. Yeah, it's always you. It's never them. And, uh, you know, I think that they devoted, uh, NBC of all people, went back and, and counted. I think they devoted at least a quarter of their magazine, their 52 magazine covers for, since it's weekly for 2008 to Barack Obama. At, a, at some point, this just gets to be silly. I picked up Time Magazine. I don't really read it much anymore. I picked it up this week because of the, the Robin Williams story. Robin Williams was on the cover. There's a long article in there about uh, Common Core. Well, you can, you can guess they're uh, in favor of Common Core. And they make, of course, everybody who opposes it, you know, those Tea Partiers, et cetera, look like a bunch of nuts. And, I, I, well, no, no wonder people don't want to read the, the Time Magazine. I mean, they had no real facts on why people honestly opposed this. They didn't go into any detail. Um, it, it was just sort of more of the typical same old thing. And I, I, I'm sure that's why a lot of people just stopped reading it. And, Jeffrey, in your piece, you, you, you go back in time, as you say, 
uh, so to speak, no pun intended, uh, to a personal experience with uh, CNN. Right. And you were writing a bunch of articles for the American Spectator talking about, as you put it, a cabal between a member of the FCC and a number of, uh, of uh, mainline churches that were out to silence Rush, uh, were out to silence Glenn Beck on Fox at the time and Lou Dobbs on CNN at the time. Talk about that. Yeah, they, they had what they called a drop Dobbs campaign. And I wrote about this, and Lou Dobbs saw the column. So I was invited into CNN in New York, went in, and I'm there in the green room. You know, he comes in for a second, shakes his hand, and says something like, well, this is going to be a momentous night. I had no idea what he meant, nor did anybody else standing there in the green room who were the other guests. He goes into his studio. We watch on the monitor, and he says, well, we have so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so tonight, but before we get to that, I want to make an announcement. I'm resigning from CNN after 30 years. <laughs> I was astonished. So was everybody else in the room. By the time it was my turn to go in there for this talk about the First Amendment and how all there was all this pressure to drop him and get him off the network, I said to him off the air, Lou, I, I, I'm, I'm stunned. I don't know what to say. And he laughed. He said, we'll think of something. So, of course, he leaves. He goes over to Fox. Fox is beating the pants off of CNN. And they can't figure out what their problem is. I, I just, I, I, you know, again, this, I think, becomes a matter of faith and religion and liberalism. And, you know, if it happens to get Lou Dobbs, well, then so it gets Lou Dobbs and goodbye to him. And then they, you know, go down another few notches in the ratings. But, you know, Jeffrey, here's the thing. Um, you, know, the, the, you, you know, there's been over the, uh, let's see, Rush started in 1988. I was at WABC Radio at the time when he came aboard and came to WABC and, and did his show, and then it started, you know, getting more and more and more and more affiliates. Um, and over the course of time, uh, you know, he's been targeted by the left so uh, vehemently. But more recently, his latest couple of, uh, of, of uh, targetings, if you will, I think, you know, Cumulus came out and said, and I've Googled this because I saw it, and then I've Googled it and I've tried to find it and I can't find it. But, you know, the, 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 the last boycott, the, the people complaining about right. Rush, it's a handful of people. It's, it's always been a handful of people. They're organized. They have nothing else to do. This is what they do for a living. They're out to silence the right. And they send email and email and email and threaten uh, whether the person's on TV or on radio. They call the stations. They call the advertisers. They say, we're going to have a mass protest. We're going to boycott. We're going to do this. We're going to make you look bad. And it's a handful of people. That's and, right. and that's what these advertisers and station managers and program directors and everybody else has to learn. You know, Steve, uh, as it happened with that, I, when I saw that what was unfolding, I wrote an article for the American Spectator called Rally for Rush. And I went in there, I went to all of the, it was at that time seven sponsors that were pressured into leaving. I published all their names, all their contact info, their emails, their snail mails, their phone numbers, et cetera. They were inundated, right. inundated with Rush Limbaugh fans calling and emailing and dropping whatever product they were, they were selling. One guy came back to Rush and wanted back on and Rush rightfully said no uh which is a reminder that there is a huge said no uh which is a reminder that there is a huge audience of folks out there plating people and these sponsors were dopey enough to allow themselves to be manipulated and they ran into big trouble and jeffrey over the year the, the problem is that um you know that the, the 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 majority as you say if they were aware if they had the time, you provided a great service by providing the, the names of the sponsors, the contacts, et cetera. But most people don't have the time, the awareness, right. and the information at their disposal. So they're the silent majority. And when I talk about, again, the, the vocal minority, we're not even talking, we're talking about nobody. We're talking about a statistically insignificant number of people that you could fit on both your hands probably, and they cause all the problems or the disturbances that's pressuring right. the sponsors who then overreact not knowing what's going on you know you, you'll be pleased to know I got I looked at the newsbuster site this morning there's something like 358 uh, people who responded that's a lot and I noticed one of them said that they've stopped watching various things and they're watching Newsmax there you go TV. there you go well so, <laughs> that's good news I am happy to hear that I, I mean, people know where to go. People can figure this out for themselves, 
uh, you know, once they're aware, and clearly they are aware of this, this is why they're they're dropping their subscriptions and just not watching these things. By the way, I, I neglected to mention Jeffrey's great book, The Borking Rebellion. Check out The Borking Rebellion and check out uh, The Ebola of Journalism. Liberalism is killing Time and CNN. It's at newsbusters.org. Uh, one of the great websites of the Media Research Center. Jeffrey, always great to talk to you, sir. Thanks, Steve. Anytime. Take care. Jeffrey Lord, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, it's very true. We live in a very scary society where the media is so far off, so far to the left, uh, and spinning what they call facts uh, to their advantage and, and to their satisfaction. And then when people come along and try to counterbalance that, this handful of groups and people, activists, are looking to shut down any dissenting uh, viewpoint. All right, folks, we're coming back. Don't go away. Give me five is next.